there was trouble at professors Al Einstein and Tony Pizza's Space Center, and they hoped they could help. The space rover needs to roam Mars taking pictures and gathering rock samples. See there? But the control will stick. It works at first, but we have trouble whenever it reaches the... Uh, sleeping monkey? How... I didn't notice him go. How can we communicate with him? There's only one way, and it's through that door. George? George? The Mars yard is supposed to be exactly like Mars. There are no monkeys sleeping on Mars. George knew the man was right because he'd been learning all about Mars. He'd learned things like Mars is called the Red Planet because its soil contains red iron. Sorry. George was so excited about seeing the Mars rover launch, he couldn't sleep at all last night. I'm afraid there's not going to be a launch if we don't solve this problem. It's stuck again. Well, but why? Are you chewing gum? Oh, how impolite of me. <laughs> Anybody want some? Spinach and broccoli flavor? Ooh, yum. <laughs> Now, you know there's no gum chewing in Mission Control, Einstein. Sorry, Pizza. Hmm. We go through this every day since he discovered that new flavor. <laughs> Gum's allowed in here. <laughs> <sighs> we must figure out what is causing the rover's controls to stick or cancel the launch. Well, since Mars is very different than Earth, is it possible the controls wouldn't stick there? <laughs> You're wondering about Martian gravity? <laughs> Mars has lower gravity than Earth does. You'd be three times stronger there. If the pull of Earth's gravity is causing the sticking, it might not stick in Mars' low gravity. That's true. <laughs> but what if it does still stick? George wanted to help, but he was tired. When the rover sticks, we can get it going again by giving it a good push. If only we could send someone to Mars to push it. Nothing puts a monkey to sleep like a lot of grown-ups talking. Wake up, George. Oh. It's time to go. <laughs> George had slept through his whole visit. Oh, you don't want to go? <laughs> if he doesn't want to go to Mars, we can't make him. <laughs> it's time to go to Mars, but if you don't want to go... Ready to be the first monkey on Mars? <laughs> it's an important mission, George. If the rover sticks, your job is to give it a good push. <laughs> yep, we're going to Mars together. <laughs> Three, two, one, lift off. We're going to Mars! <laughs> to a curious monkey like George, 
Each morning meant a new surprise the moment he stepped outside. <laughs> Some mornings, he didn't even get that far. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. Meet Goliath. He just moved into the building. His owner has a guest who's allergic to dogs. So Goliath is helping Hundley and me in the lobby today. If you called blocking the elevator, help him. Whoa. Oh, a delivery. Wow, look at all the packages. It's new lights for the hallways. Let's store them in the basement until the electrician comes. Oh, Hundley, could you get that? That was not a chew toy. Thanks, Goliath. Hello? Goliath could reach really tall places. Hundley wondered if the doorman's job would be easier with someone like Goliath. Aww. He could put mail in the high mailboxes and take it back out again. He could call elevators. He could probably even put the star on top of the Christmas tree. Aww. No problem. Bye. Thanks, Goliath. <sighs> that Goliath sure is a big help, isn't he? He sure is. It was true. The doorman did want a taller door dog. George wondered what would cheer up Hundley. Maybe he'd be happier if he were tall like Goliath. <laughs> hey, I know how we can make Hundley taller. Oh. Stilts! I had a pair when I was little. They're fun. Oh. George realized dachshunds couldn't use stilts. They didn't have hands to hold on to them. <sighs> if only they made stilts you didn't have to hang on to. <sighs> <sighs> what do you know? They did. <clears throat> All George needed were dog shoes with platform soles. Making Hunley taller is harder than I thought. Marco was right. Maybe they could find another way to make him taller to cheer him up. When you live in a city, there's always excitement in the air. <laughs> Monkeys love flying things. 
So when George heard Professor Wiseman had a plane that looked like a bird to follow other birds, he wanted to be sure to have a front row seat for the big launch. After all, some of George's best friends were birds. You guys realize the launch isn't until later, right? Yes. Well, what are you going to do for the next hour? Oh, I can keep them busy. How'd you like to help me with Bird's final trial flight? Ah! Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have fun. I'll see you in an hour. Okay. Why is your plane called Bird? It's an acronym. It stands for Bird Investigation and Recovery Device. Oh. Why? See up there? Birds migrate north to nest in summer. But along the way, many birds get lost, and we don't know why. <laughs> Bird will track the migration and help us locate lost birds. That is so cool. <laughs> we'll reunite them with their flock and try to fix whatever made them get lost in the first place. Bird's first mission? Follow a flock of rusty blackbirds passing over this afternoon. Oh! But first, you're going to help me with the last test flight. Now here's how the remote control works. To launch Bird, first push the green button to start the engine. Push the joystick up to make Bird go up. Move the joystick left to make Bird go left. Then push the yellow switch up to activate the automatic pilot so that our computer can talk to Bird and Bird can talk back to our computer. Then our computer can fly the plane. Oh, oh, ah. Gentlemen, prepare for takeoff. Roger! <laughs> okay, I'm going to push the green button to turn Bird on. Oh, dear. I must be doing something wrong. Hello, Einstein? This is Wiseman. Bird isn't initiating properly. Uh, did you hit the on button? Well, of course. I'm a scientist. I do what the directions say. Maybe some of the wires came loose during the transport. Roger. Stand by for inspection. How odd. Uh, hold this for me, will you, Marco? Uh, George, can you take the remote? Yeah. Sounds like all systems are go. Ow! Whoa! Come back here! Or maybe not. It shouldn't be able to do that. Scrub mission! Scrub mission! How'd you start the engine? George didn't know. Normally, if you hit off, things didn't turn on. George, push the joystick up and fly Bird over the banner. <laughs> but instead of going up, Bird went down. That's an even better idea. Push the joystick down and bring Bird in for a landing. But instead of going down, Bird went up. Not up, George. Down, down, down. He is pushing down, down, down. It's going to crash into the tree. <sighs> that was a close one. Ah. It was a special day in the country. Because tonight, everyone was coming to the Rankin's barn for a hoedown. Hey, George! <laughs> George wasn't sure what a hoedown was. But getting ready for one sure was fun. There we go. I tell you what, you kids don't know what you're in for. There'll be hay rides and 
square dancing. Oh, and best of all, there'll be real live bluegrass music. What's bluegrass? Oh, lightning fast, foot stomping music that'll make you want to jig. Oh, it's a hoot. Ooh. Huh? <gasps> George, do you hear that? <gasps> Say hello to the Uptown Bluegrass Band. Everyone, this is George and Allie. Well, Howdy. Hello. Hi there, kids. Hello. Howdy. Look at all those fun bluegrass instruments, George. Like the banjo. Ah. The fiddle. Ooh. The stand-up bass. Ah. And the mandolin. <laughs> and don't forget old Bo, best guitar in the world. Of all the instruments, the guitar was George's favorite. It looked like the most fun to play. Thank you enough for coming to play at our hoedown. <laughs> well, couldn't let my old friend down. Thanks. Ooh. You like old Bo? Uh -huh. You bet. Well, thanks. I made it myself. You really? Do. Wow, that's a talent. It was easy. Huh? Anyone can make a guitar. All you need are the right parts. Ooh. Speaking of guitars, are you going to play with us tonight? Sure, I, I, I'd love to. What? Uh -uh. Well, didn't you know? Your friend plays a mean bluegrass guitar. Oh. Yep. Here, take a strum on old Bo. Oh, <laughs> old Bo? I, I can't. And, and besides, there's still so much to be done, and you know, my guitar's back home. And... <laughs> yeah, we'll get your guitar. Great. Hoedown's at five o'clock sharp. Oh, two hours from now. Okay. Say, maybe you can help me think up lyrics for that song we were just playing. Oh, okay. <gasps> you got it. Oh, Mr. Yellow Pants' guitar isn't all shiny like the pretty bluegrass one. <laughs> Allie was right. The guitar didn't glimmer or shine. In fact, it was dusty. <coughs> oh, I know. Let's give it a bath. Grandma says there's nothing like a bath to make you bright and shiny. George couldn't wait to see the man's guitar all bright and shiny. Uh-oh. But instead, the bath made it lumpy and peely. George needed another guitar for the man to play at the hoedown and fast. <gasps> and then he remembered. Anyone can make a guitar. You just need the right parts. George would make a new one. <laughs> Great idea, George. We'll make a new and improved guitar. <laughs> First, they needed some kind of box with a hole in it. They found lots of boxes. But some of them were flimsy. And none of them had holes. It was time for the town of Lake Wanasink to have its 100-year anniversary party. George knew 100 was a lot because he once ordered 100 boxes of donuts accidentally. The man with the yellow hat asked George to give invitations to all their friends. Gotta get things moving cause the day is almost here. This kind of thing just doesn't happen every year. Time to get the word out and you know that you can count on me. I'm 
gonna travel through the town from end to end Telling all the strangers and I'm telling all my friends I'll make sure everyone in earshot will attend Yes, indeed Everyone planned to attend, except those who already had plans to be on an iceberg. George couldn't wait for the party. George, we have to stop at Mr. Quince and get the Anniversa Jubilaria. This is the Anniversa Jubilaria. It's as old as the town. 100 years. <laughs> We bring it out once a year at the town's anniversary party. One star has been added to it every year since the town was founded. Yeah, that's one we just added. Number 100. <laughs> Were there really a hundred stars? George decided to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten stars. But he had one problem. Remember how to count to 100? Uh -uh. Well, you just count it to 10. So if you count to 10 10 times, that's 100. Ooh. Uh -huh. So how many stripes are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten rows. Each row has 10 stars. That's 100. All the stars were in nice rows. Ah. All except one. George could fix that. That's when George learned how windy it is in a moving car. Can you imagine? It took the town a hundred years to complete that. will go absolutely wild when they see all 100 stars on the Anniversary Jubilaria. How wild would they go when they saw no stars? George had to tell the man about what happened. <laughs> Just the guy we need. Can you come help with the costumes? Sure. George, do you mind staying here and helping with the Anniversary Jubilaria? Uh. Thanks. George would need to fix the anniversary jubilaria himself before anyone was disappointed. <laughs> A good place to start was where the stripes flew out of the car. <gasps> and it was. quickly found two. Jumpy. 